Hey guys, Robin from Wander Open Roads, and today we wanted to show you our tow bar setup. Uh, we have the Avail Blue Ox tow bar, uh, which is the 10,000 pound capacity. We didn't we didn't really need all that capacity, but you know, hey, you never know, right? So this is the tow bar itself in the storage position, and I have some have some bikes here, so I got to kind of move it out of the way a little bit. But uh, you know, I want to show you the uh, the setup and, and we'll we'll start here so step one is I always like to wear gloves you know there's grease and dirt and different things so it gets a little dirty so go ahead and throw some gloves in your storage compartment so that you have some work gloves to uh, work with and make it a little better all right so step one is I'm going to pull the tow bar out of the storage position remember that when you're when you're handling these end pieces to actually grab it by the metal end pieces and do not grab it by this 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 rubber sleeve here okay so i'm going to grab it from here and, oh, push these bikes out of the way and, uh, yeah. that actually worked <laughs> and then just spread them apart and i like to go ahead and extend them by releasing this 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 lever Okay, and now at this point we are ready to bring the tow vehicle up. So we have a Ford Maverick, which we're going to talk about because we really love having the Ford Maverick as a as a tow vehicle. Uh, so these are the receivers that go into the uh, the Maverick. Now you have to have a a tow kit installed on your on your vehicle. First first of all, make sure that your vehicle can be flat towed, okay? Uh, and, and there are a lot of resources out there for that. Actually, if you go to Bl Blue Ox, they have all that information on there, okay? Um, so let's put the receivers in. So this is a twist lock, okay? So it has this, this pin that locks it in. So we start here, stick it in, and then just twist it, twist and push until this pin locks in place. And I always like to make sure that this pin, this, uh, this, this, this key here is on the outside because you don't want it to get pulled from something on the inside when you, when you connect the, uh, the, uh, the hooks and things of that nature. Okay, and then the second one, same thing. Slip that in and push, twist, lock. All right, so that's ready to go. So now it's helpful to have a to have a buddy like Miko to uh, pull the truck up and, and then we can get everything lined up. Okay, let's get everything hooked up now. So once again, grabbing by the middle piece and not by this, I'm going to release this. I'm gonna pull this pin out and then I'm just gonna line this up these holes put that pin through and then put my cotter through on the outside to lock it in place just like that okay so here on the other side I'm going to do the same thing and we're at a little bit of an angle and I notice that we don't have enough length here so I'm gonna ask Miko to get back in and to pull up just about six to eight inches so that I can lock in this other side. Make sure that this is loose so that this will actually compress and, and she can actually pull forward. Okay, so Miko pulled it up about eight inches and now, yep, everything is right with the world. So, put that in, lock it from the outside and that is good. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the safety cables. I already have it attached to the uh, to the rig, and I'm going to crisscross underneath in order to attach them to the to the truck. So pulling from this side, which is the driver's side, I'm coming over here to the to the passenger side. And then, 
And then same thing over here. Let me come underneath here. And this is why I wanted to have my, my, my cotters in connection on the outside so that this hook does not interfere with anything on the inside. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is connect this big red cable. So what this does, this makes sure that the turn signals and brake signals from the, from the rig operate the truck brake signals and turn signals. And also it charges the battery as we're going down the road. If you, if you do not have that capability, after about three or four hours, your, your car or truck could potentially have a dead battery. So definitely make sure that you have the ability to charge your, charge your tow vehicle while you're driving down the road. Make sure everything is nice and tight. And I like to put this over top of the blue ox so that if something happens and it gets disconnected, more than likely this cable will just kind of stay on top rather than actually falling down and dragging on the road. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this orange orange uh, cable here. This is the breakaway cable for the for the brake system. So I just attach it here. And if this gets pulled out, then the truck will automatically apply its brakes to a complete stop. That means that something catastrophic has happened and the tow vehicle has become disconnected from the rig. So that's a, that's a fail safe right there. Okay. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do here is we have a, this, this Roadmaster screen. It's a, it's a mesh screen product that attaches to these, these clips right here. And it's something to just help from road debris coming up and hitting the front of the, of the tow vehicle. So um, we, haven't, we haven't had any, any issues with rocks or, or damage on the, on the front of the tow vehicle. And I like to think that it's because we use this product. So. so I'm just gonna roll this out. I had to do some customization on these holes. I actually had to, had to drill some, some new holes to make sure this fits, but that wasn't too difficult. That locks in right there. And the nice thing is, this is the Roadmaster Tow Defender. And as, as the as the tow vehicle turns, it actually mimics that turn too. It has, it has uh, shocks in the uh, front here so that it'll actually turn and, and uh, manipulate with it so that the screen does not tear. So that's a, that's a good thing. I'll come on the other side and uh, attach that one. Okay, so that's it. Um, the next thing that would happen is Miko is going to go inside of the truck and put it in tow mode. And we're just going to double check the brake lights and signals. And then we're ready to go. I mean, we're, we're filming this, so I'm taking a little more time. But I mean, this is something that I can do in five minutes and we can be ready to go. So very quick and easy process. We have not had any, any issues. We've been towing in this method for, oh gosh, about... Uh, eight or nine months now so never had any 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 issues with it um so yeah definitely check this out four wheels down is the way to go so here is the complete setup of our tow system 
make sure that before you put it in tow mode that you actually pull back and lock the tow bar. You should hear a click when you pull back slowly and then you can put it in tow mode with the tow bars locked. They should lock before you pull off, but we like to lock ours before we do. Okay, so here we are. Now let's get everything unhooked. So what I like to do um, when I'm taking these, these out, I like to press this down to release the tension. And, the, and that usually uh, allows me to get them out pretty easily. Like I press it in, compress that spring all the way. And then for storage, I'll just stick it back in here with the cotter. Just to keep it, keep it nice and neat. Another thing that I do is I remove these and I keep them in a storage bin in, inside of the rig. I do not want these things to uh, disappear. Okay, so for these uh, receiver holes, I actually have, have plugs that I bought from e-trailer. That I, that I put in here so that these, we don't get rust and debris on, on the inside of the receiver holes. So, so that there, and that right there. And then I have, then I have these straps for the uh, tow guard here. Just to make sure that doesn't unravel. my chains sometimes I'll take them off but really for the most part I just store them here I just pick them up and hook them inside of each other and just keep it right there this I just keep on the bumper this this cord I do remove and I'll put it inside my storage bin on the inside this is also something that we that we do here it's just a little a little velcro tab here in order to once again make sure that just in case this does become unplugged as you're going down the road that it doesn't just fall to the ground so this is my storage box where i keep the hose, the receivers, my gloves, everything related to that. And then this is the Blue Ox cover that comes with it. I always make sure that um, when it's in storage that I cover this thing up to protect it from the elements. Once again, I have my bikes here, so I gotta push them in a little bit. get it into the storage position and put the cover on and that's it.
Thanks for joining us for another Wander Open Roads adventure, and we will see you next time. Be sure to check out our camping apparel and accessories at shopredsquare.com. We also sell on Etsy and Amazon. The links will be in the description. Thank you.